Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Boom, there you go. Look at that. Yeah, there you go. There you go. What's up, Marsh? <laughs> What's up, y'all? Second question. Can I cuss with the demonetization and the censorship and the fascism going on right now? Am I am I allowed to will it will it please the crown if I cuss? <laughs> it won't, but you do what you gotta do, man. As far as I'm concerned, we'll just deal with that. You be you. That's all we want. That's all the folks out there want from you. Um, Babyface P was just here. Um, he, he, he threw up a meme. I don't know whether or not you saw his meme. I try to tag you in it, but we also have Alaska, Alaskan ballistics as well as Puerto Rican pistolero, uh, in here right now with you. So what's up? That Puerto Rican pistolero. What's up, my brother? How's it going, Maj? Good to see you again, man. How you been? Okay. So I'm, I'm assuming that you're in or from Alaska. Yes, sir. Yes, All sir. Right. Class in Alaska. I haven't been there. I'm trying to... But we got to do it like in the in this in this late summer, early fall that y'all winter times is something else. And I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we, you just double up and keep doing what you're doing. No yeah. Doubt. yeah. If you do really want to uh, go out to Alaska, man, I could put you guys in touch. And Alaskan Ballistics, his name is Chuck. He can help you out with that, man. Yeah, Chuck. Yeah. Okay. Hank, Hank and Chuck. Wait, y'all got to have like, y'all have like the most American names. Hank. <laughs> And Chuck. Yeah. We all can't be Maj. <laughs> only one of them. <laughs> yeah, everyone can't be Maj around here. <laughs> yeah. What's up, y'all? What's up, man? Everyone's shouting you out right now out there in the chat. Um, listen, the subject of, of, of the podcast tonight and the reason why I invited you on is everything going on um, around the, the situation with NFAC. Um, and I wanted to get your take on this. I know you've yeah. obviously NFAC. seen all the stuff. Yeah, I, you're breaking up a little bit here. Let me see. Okay, we probably lost him here for a second. He looks like he's slowing down. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Night Train says, I see the mean and greedy streets. Obviously, the internet is also mean and gritty. You, you're breaking up there. Um, I spoke to... Hold, yeah, you're breaking up. I'm up. Yeah. <laughs> if you find a good spot <laughs> where the internet is working... Can you at least park there? I'm gonna park there. I'm gonna park now. Yeah. How about now? Uh, yeah. This is this is decent enough that we can hear you. Yeah. All right. So, I spoke to Grandmaster J um, yesterday for about a half hour. Okay. Uh, we because the first thing I thought was um, I'm gonna keep it a buck. The first thing I thought was people are gonna automatically assume that you know how. Okay. So Hank, you can you can. You can attest to this, right? Somebody that does it, that that'll meet you like for the first few times and doesn't really know you, they'll be like, "Well, yeah, my cousin has guns. Um, do you know him?" Mm -hmm. And it's like, "No, I don't know my cousin." Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I, right. I, you know. So my thought was, okay, we're gonna associate everything that he does with the work that we do. Um, then the second thing that I thought was, um, you have to reach out if you want to critique someone. I think it's really important to reach out to that person and get content. A lot of people on the right say, you know, if you're a Trump supporter or not, you'll say, you know, well, we got to get the context. We got to get all of the facts. Um, but sometimes it's more difficult to do that as opposed to saying it. So I reached out to him. I wanted to hear his perspective. I spoke to him for about a half hour yesterday. Um, I did a little bit of a live on it, but um, I just wanted to know the context. And mm -hmm. I like the fact that he's a, it's a showing of that many melanated beings exercising their Second Amendment rights, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm a fan of that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, oh, I think that, you know, um, I'm not personally an open carry person, but to each his own. And symbolically, I think that's an amazing thing. You know, mm -hmm. um, there's some concerns that I have. Um, obviously, in the, the most recent video, I'm like, eh. That's just inaccurate, you know, and we talked about that. And, and uh, any any questions that y'all got about the conversation, we can do it. Um, I'm totally open to it. And I told him I was going to talk about it. Like, okay. I'm not, y'all know me, I'm, Hank, you know I'm fully transparent. I've been honest about the cases that I've caught. I've been honest about, mm -hmm. you know, the things that I've, I've used. And so um, everybody knows I'm going to be transparent. So 
Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever questions y'all, you know. But off top though, I do think that it's very important for there to be a more and more and more of a showing of melanated beings across the country, whether they're our brown brothers and sisters, our yellow brothers and sisters. Um, I don't know. I don't want to get called a racist, but like our red brothers and sisters. I think that it's very important that we are showing up in mass and showing symbolic a gesture of hey we're armed and we exercise our second amendment rights so that's my, my primary thought of why i support that portion of that movement but any other questions because I, I definitely got some concerns some questions i got up in there you know immediately okay um, so I think I heard the, the last part. Um, my, uh, if you, I don't know if you guys have any questions. My first question would be, when you spoke to him, uh, how did he come across to you? Did he seem receptive to the, concern, to the concerns that we have? Like, does he even care about the gun community, for example, and our opinions of what went down? No, he doesn't give a shit about the opinions. Um, okay. And I can, I can understand that. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times, a lot of the shit that's opinionated, you know the story. Opinions is like assholes. Everybody's got one. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. um, so and I and I respect that. Mm-hmm. Um, he was in my conversation with him. He was very standoffish. Mm-hmm. Now my objective nature goes. Well, if I made a blunder and if everybody that reached out to me was trying to attack me or potentially school me, I might be a little defensive too. Um, and I didn't see. The negligence. Mm-hmm. I, didn't, I, I don't know anybody that has any of the footage, so I'm, I'm giving it a little bit more room. Mm-hmm. Um, as a people like Voda or Vada or Lucian or whatever his name is, this month, you know what I'm saying? I can see exactly what unsafe things he's doing. I can see it. I can mm-hmm. go, yeah, that's bull. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so I wanted to hear his perspective. But no, initially he was he was defensive. Um, and he's he has more of a, 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 a like, a stoic, you know, like, I, you know, Hank, you and I, we kind of, we laugh, we joke, but when it comes to firearm safety, we're very, very strict, mm-hmm. right? But outside of that, we laugh, we joke, we poke fun of ourselves, so forth and so on. That's not who he is as as, as, as his character, yeah. right? So um, he was very defensive, but as we talked, he was, he was much more receptive, but in regards to the opinions of other people in the community, especially people that haven't reached out to him, Mm-hmm. He doesn't give, a and he shouldn't. Right. I don't so, give a anybody that hasn't reached out to me to help me either. So okay, you know cool. I mean? So let's. So let me just say this before you came on, which obviously I know you're busy and you haven't. You probably have not had a chance to see what we're saying before you came on. Um, you're you're welcome to to go look back at it another time, and if you have any issues, you know, come back on and we could talk about it. Um, yeah. Uh, I think there's several things. So first of all, I think my conclusion, and and these guys could tell me if they disagree, one, all of us, whether you consider yourself part of this community or not, if you are doing something around firearms or anything for that matter, we have the right to look at what you're doing, and we feel like we have the right to criticize it or even make fun of it. You know, mostly it's where is that coming from, right? Because we do it, we've done it to each other. If you, I saw your live, you said if you did something wrong, you're you're the one that would be held responsible and you would expect for people to speak on it you know it maybe even make fun of you it's not just happened to black people although i know that there are black people that feel when something like this happens everyone's just coming down on them but we've done it recently to everyone you know so including including white people and i feel like that's fair right for for people to see that fair up until the the comment section is disgusting Mm-hmm. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Mm-hmm. Me ragging on friends, right? I don't have the best. I'm my legs are strong, but I don't have, have the best looking calves, mm-hmm. right? When my friends rag on me, my weightlifting friends rag on me about my calves, I know where it's coming from. But in that comment section, if it turns into he's got those bigger calves, it's mm-hmm. like whoa, mm-hmm. whoa. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of that's in those comment sections, not maybe necessarily. Um, the, the 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 influencers or the, the gun guys and gun women and I gotta say guys because women they're way more like refined and classy than us we are animals I, us guys <laughs> we just do all kind of crazy stuff yeah right? yeah it's, so maybe not the influencers but them comment sections from a lot of those guys that post that stuff you know t- you know Tim from Military Arms Channel 
He did a very good job of being objective. Mr. Guns and Gear, the co the caption was great on this video. It was, hey, if I supported NFAC, mm -hmm. if I was a member and supported it, I would, in essence, be asking for a different leadership because mm -hmm. this, the leader's making us look bad. And I thought that was a good section turns into trash. Yeah, so here's the so here's the thing. I mean, so so if it's someone who has a name, a face and a reputation and they're putting that out there, then we could deal with that. Just like if it was something they were doing, we could deal with it. If we all know, yeah. for all of us, everyone in their comments, there's a lot of nonsense, right? Uh, Guns and Gear, Military Arms Channel, you, me, everyone that's on here, there's a lot of nonsense because people are pretty much anonymous out there. People have multiple accounts. You know, there's yeah. people coming at you from both sides if, and it's the same person. So there's a lot of that. I think in our conversation here, in general, we all support what those guys are doing. I know I haven't said anything bad about them. Um, be Like they have the right to be a militia and be armed. I believe that. And, and everyone that's here on this panel right now with us believes that. Am I correct, guys? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we support that. Now, obviously, they, you know, they, they have the freedom to not be in the community or care about us. But we support people's rights in America to be armed. We believe in the Second Amendment and that it's for everyone. Um, so I feel like there's we're all seeing that there's some things going wrong and we could maybe help. For sure, yeah. not all of our comments and our reactions to it are helpful. But we could help. But part of that, like you said, part of being friends, part of being in the same community is you, you know, you have the license to, to say things about what's happening to at least have the discussion and for the other side to be open to listen to that if they if they care to. I think I think that, yes, 100 percent agree with that, that broken down very eloquently, Hank. Mm -hmm. I, what I'm saying, though, is even people that I completely disagree with, um, I can understand and, and, and get the vibe, mm -hmm. right? He has, um, this is where I'll be critical of, of Grandmaster J. His arrogant level is like, bro, listen, if I said to you, I'll put a full mag in my Glock 19, and in that Glock 19, if I rack the slide, it's going to create, a, the firearm's going to fire. Everybody would laugh at me, right? Mm -hmm. That's an essence of what you're saying when you say, Okay, I hit the back of the buttstock, it, it, it racks around. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Um, and if I said that that meant that every day somebody's going to get their head blown off, y'all would be like, bro, what are you talking about? There's so many levels of, of mm -hmm. sorry, like... Are you serious? Like, are you being satirical? Like, you're yeah. being funny. Well, if you put yourself up as an expert, so for example, the words where he said he was like, hold on, y'all, let me show you how stupid these idiots are. Right. So now you're putting yourself up as an expert. Uh, for me, I've never put myself up as an expert. Um, I know there are people who definitely are, you know, and there's people who say that they are. But once you put yourself in that position where you're like, let me show you how stupid these guys are when you and I heard you say that, that, you know, you have to take responsibility for what yeah. happened. It's it's, you know, for sure, there's misinformation maybe out there. And this was not a negligent discharge that that wound up with someone getting actually shot, but getting hit with shrapnel is still a, a negligent discharge. And you still have to take responsibility for that if you are the person in charge yeah. and you put on that event. If you're a leader, if you're the coach, if you're the team captain, again, I say this all the time, I am a point guard. I have access to, you know, um, Kareem Abdul... Uh, you start again, man, because you Magic broke up there. Magic Johnson was a superstar in his own right. Okay. But Magic, Magic Johnson had Kareem. You know, you, you, you have someone to dish to. And as a point guard, as the captain, when, when the, the winds come, everybody's going to drink the champagne. Everybody wants to champagne. Everybody gets the champagne shower, right? Mm -hmm. But when those losses come, the team captain, the point guard, and the coach, and the owners deal with the owners deal with it financially. Mm -hmm. Point guard deals with it on you know, or the team captain, maybe the point guard or not, deals with it in the press. But the rest of the guys are unseen. Mm -hmm. They don't even come out to the captain. You get that C on your jersey, 
you come out and I'm going to deal with the brunt of this. Anything that happens, anything that the questions that happened about black, uh, about my, my charges and all that other stuff, I have to stand in front of every camera and repeat the same story a thousand times. I have to take that heat. Yeah, and you did it. When you first came out, when you first came out, we actually, me and you went through this. Yeah. Right? Like, you first came out, everyone reached out to me because they're like, what's up with this Marge to Ray guy? You know, uh, I'm supposed to know all the black people, <laughs> which right. I guess is kind of true, <laughs> even though it is it. And, but you came on and you took every question, including the uncomfortable ones, and you answered them and you answered them over and over again. And this is how we measure a man. Like you were talking about right. men. This is how we measure each other. Like if you're a leader and something goes wrong and you don't take responsibility for it, we're going to measure you like that, whether you like it or not. All right. And that's that's because I can I can and this is where humility kicks in that I challenge some of us not the not the leadership or the, the influencers or the guys with big followings and those guys pretty much get it mm -hmm. right and they have to address it but I'm more speaking to the rank and file the guys that's in those comment sections outside of the bots right we have to take on more of a spirit of humility. Because whatever we want to say about this dude and his arrogance, because he is arrogant. He's arrogant. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be straight up about that. He's arrogant. For me to reach out to you when I don't have to, and for you to me to pick up that phone call and it's defense, I can literally at that point just hang up and be like, out of here. I've put my time in. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And every no one no one can legitimately say Maj didn't put his time, resources, and sweat equity. If you say that, everybody's going to go, nah, I don't like him, but he has put his time in, right? So I could go, who the f*** are you to be arrogant with me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. but, but at the same time, the spirit of humility we have to take on, which is, this guy doesn't know, but sometimes you're following that you're, th you got to read post from 50 Cent, a legend. Mm -hmm. You got to read post from 50 Cent. When he started following me a year or so ago, he had maybe 1,500 followers, maybe, on the gram. Mm -hmm. You have uh, over 100,000 followers now in the last two weeks. We have to use everyone in the Army, and sometimes you're thrust into a position that you're actually not ready for. I do not believe that he's... I think he is thrust into a position of leadership, but I think we could help him add on to his position of a leader of those people. Me as a, you know, I'm not a part of the thousand yard club. I don't want to be. I want to deal with three to five yards. I'm good there. That's where most of the goofy shit happens. I want to be sound and excellent at three to five yards, mm -hmm. right? With that being the case, I know my role and I say, you know, nah, don't come ask me about the Coriolis effect. I'm going to lead you to, if you've already got to a certain level of, of instruction and tutelage, I'm going to say, Yo, Buck Doyle, my man mm -hmm. is on it. And he needs to come out to Utah and come see a follow through uh, Buck course. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, yo, this guy's finger is giving me, uh, his, his finger is giving me, uh, 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 you know, uh, Jerry M Michelek vibes. I'm going to reach out to the Michelek family and go, yo, I got a student from the last two years that's, way beyond me now and I'm gonna pass off that's a certain level of a leader a good leader is a delegator mm -hmm. a good leader is willing to lead from the front and die for and protect his team mm -hmm. a good leader has to think about everything he has been thrust into a position of leadership and I think we could help him before we critique him negatively because what's gonna happen there is and I'm not saying don't shoot the shit on him as guys we're gonna rattle him Mm -hmm. My homies drag on my calf muscles mm -hmm. from a loving place. They're going to mm -hmm. be like, bro, just, I saw you squat 500 pounds. What the f*** is up with your calves, bro? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> Yeah, stop missing leg day. <laughs> you know what I mean? But genetics is genetics, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're missing leg day, but you're somehow missing leg day. You're yeah. going to make fun of me. Yeah. But from a loving place, and I know because we've developed that rapport, I'm challenging the people in those comment sections to develop that rapport with someone that has gotten, in a very short period of time, gotten national attention. And it's not that he was doing the negligent himself. 
if what he's saying is true, is someone passed out and they yeah, it looks like it, this all this all blossomed and got uh, probably unmanageable, right? Because there's lots yeah. of people that want to be involved. But this is why I asked you the question at first: Does this person even care to do it? Because here's the thing: if someone is saying, "Look, I don't give a crap about the gun community," you know, like let's say I let's say I come into doing this and I'm like, "I don't care about the gun community. I don't care what they think about me. I don't care what they have to say." That's one thing. But if you do care. If you do yeah. care about that, and if you're if you're gonna say, hey, these people are just trying to get at us, they're not, they don't want to support us, and they're doing it because of this. If you that that it that indicates to me that you care. If you care, then you have to. Oh, this has to be an open two way communication where maybe people are paying attention to you because of some crazy stuff happening, but you can correct that and you can build that into something. You can build that relationship. That bridge can't come across one way, right? People have to build that bridge from either side of the shores. That's why it was very important for me, and he agreed mm -hmm. to do a safety class with Black Guns Matter. Mm -hmm. To me. Be arrogant, be militant, be all of those things. I can tell you where I agree. I can tell you why I disagree. Mm -hmm. the, 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 where the rubber meets the road for me, if you do a good basic firearm safety class. Mm -hmm. And he agreed to it. Okay. We'll see what comes of it. And I think that, that I'm, I'm Jon Snow, baby. I'm just trying to unite the clans because the anti-gun community is the White Walkers and the Night King. They're coming. Mm -hmm. Winter is coming. Yeah, yeah. So I could just give you an example. Alaskan Ballistic said this before you came on, right? He said, you know what? For all that we could say about these guys on one side, on the other side, and I'm paraphrasing you, uh, Ballistics, but he said, you know what? I, am I admire these guys because they are willing to get out there and, and march and protest and organize and do it publicly and willing yep. to stand up to this because a lot of us in the gun community are not willing to do that. So if there's a message that could be brought to those guys, it's like, look, you're going to take this heat because you did something crazy. Best thing to do, admit it and deal with it. We talk about companies, people and all of that that do that. But we want you to, you know, we want to support what you're doing. We uh, we honestly do. I know I do. And, and for sure, man, there's going to be a percentage of people who don't feel that way. They don't matter. I, but I think they do matter. And I think that they matter because just like we're saying, we're holding him accountable for one of the members or one of the people that was there and that that ND, right? And that person may be super low on the totem pole. The people that are saying they're part of the Second Amendment community in those comment sections, that they matter too. So so and, what about so what about the people then if that matters, then do the people on his side that are in the comment sections also matter? Absolutely. Okay. You know, I'm a I'm an equal opportunity hater. Mm. I hate all <laughs> equal yeah. You know okay. like I I you, no one you know if you're not if you're not Oprah, if you're not Rihanna, mm -hmm. you know, I'm probably just tolerating you. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know? and so I'm I'm even keel with my hatred. Okay, I understand why you're tolerating uh, Rihanna. What are you tolerating Oprah for? Is it the money? Are you uh, on some are you on some Dave Chappelle type things? Is that what's uh, going on? has shown us the way uh, <laughs> okay, yes. <whatever>. All right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and so but to me it's like yes everybody even the guys in the comment section because my organization is called black guns matter if you thought this was like a hate white people fest sorry bro this ain't what this is mm -hmm. I i've had too many cool white people help out eight cheryl and danny todd from az firearms Pete Brown now is about to do something amazing. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, um, uh, uh, people that you would go, oh, they must be a liberal. They're about to do something amazing, and I can't announce that one just yet. But my point is, mm -hmm. listen, man, I actually live that that Thomas Jefferson wrote down, even when Thomas Jefferson was contradictory about it, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes, if they're, if guys in the comment section are going, oh, because you're white, you're the devil, and you're my enemy. Listen, bro, you say that until a white person saves your life. Mm -hmm. and that I, I've seen people, I've, and I'm not complaining about this, I'm just, you know, I'm just going along this thread of thought. I've seen people on, on the NFAC side go after other black people in the comment yeah. section that agree with, uh, with saying, hey, this is funny, this is crazy what this guy was saying, and cracked me up. Yeah. I've seen people go after them. You know, so, yeah. all, so if it comes down to, if the comment section is really that big of a problem, 
then you know what the, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do about that? How are we supposed to referee? We're supposed and, to check everybody. Okay. We're supposed to be equal opportunity. This is the standard. Everybody's mm-hmm. falling in line with the mother standard. My Marine homies, mm-hmm. I don't. You green, bro. I don't give a. You light green, dark green, cool. We'll have some gradation. You mm-hmm. green. Second Amendment community people to not sink ourselves by letting the fucking water in. You know, in every vampire movie, you know the vampires can't come in the house unless you invite them in. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so, everybody gotta catch that smoke. Everybody that's wrong has to catch that smoke. When I'm telling the McCluskeys, when I say, I don't think that they should have been charged, and I think that it's wrong, and I'm happy that their cases got dropped, at the same time, I'm also saying they were hella unsafe. Yeah. Two Did the McCluskeys ch- cases get dropped? Yeah, not... they got dropped. Okay, I wasn't yeah. even aware of that. When did that happen? Today? Like today or yesterday or something. Okay, I wasn't well, even aware of that. Like, okay. Hey, yo, that especially his wife, mm-hmm. they were <laughs> hella unsafe. She was yeah. three knuckles deep in that little like Ruger LC9 or whatever she had. Yes. But at the end of the day, <laughs> that smoke is for everyone. Mm-hmm. We have to be objective. You know, and so when I get my black homies, it's like, well, you know, it's because they white. No, I think it's because they're ignorant. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They don't know. I'm reach. I sent the email to the McCluskeys. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm going to keep that energy for everybody. And that's actually the answer. Mm-hmm. And then we can start going, okay, they checking me. They making fun of me because, yeah, my legs are strong, but I have higher up calves. And we still on the same team. They'll mm-hmm. go, okay, they making fun of me because I said some dumb shit that's actually not true. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's not necessarily because they white. Or some of these guys are actually racist and waiting for their opportunity to say something racist. All of those things are accurate. Discerning the difference, and to me, the overwhelming majority is the vast majority of the people that's ragging on you, they care about you, and they want you to do right, but it's funny. Mm-hmm. It's like, <laughs> like you called it a bullpup. Remember, yeah. look, and also we feel like if we listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you something real quick here. By the way, I don't think that that's confirmed on the McCluskey thing. If anyone out there has better news on that, let me know. Um, but here's the thing: there's states of being, people. So like of knowing other people, right? Someone could not know you, not care about you. Then there's they 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 know you now and they hate you and they know you and they love you. Hate and love is almost like the same thing. But the not knowing that. That's that's uh, non-existence, okay? Yeah. That's the worst part of existence. So if people are paying attention to you, there's a very thin line, right? That's the saying, a thin line between love and hate. A lot of times if people are paying attention, some of those people are doing it for, for negative, bad reasons for sure, but a lot of it is because the people care. We care about this. That's why we're talking about it, right? Uh, one, three. And, and uh, that part mm-hmm. is the part that I, I, that I challenge our, our Second Amendment guys to and women to remember in regards to every we know when our friends because we all in this in one boat right mm-hmm. we know it but until somebody that doesn't have that under clearly he's new to guns and clearly he's new to the gun community no one's gonna deny that mm-hmm. right um again in our last Show. But we but we can help and we can help make them stronger right. and we can help yeah, with the right. movement. And I think most of us do really feel that way, man. Like we support what these guys are doing. It doesn't make sense for us to say that only we could do that. And then as Alaskan Ballistics was saying, we're not even doing it. In a lot of cases, we're not even ready to get up there, you know, and go locked and loaded anywhere or really go, you know, go to the mat over any of this gun stuff that we're talking about. Guys. Huh? I re- do we know of anybody else that reached out? Um, you're the only person that I know that reached out. There are other people saying that they reached out and that, that, that this guy is not willing to talk about it. I only know one person who is part of NFAC and uh, someone reached out while we we're doing this show to him. And he said he's not willing to talk about NFAC. And I think there is a cult type of situation going on there where if Herbal anyone uh, if anyone talks like in any way that's perceived as negative, they're going to get beat down. Um, Alaskan Ballistics, go ahead real quick. I just wanted to interrupt and say like the McCloskey's charges have not been dropped. It was reported, misreported earlier today. Mm-hmm. What had happened was 
and uh, Jared Jared from Guns and Gadgets did a great video on it, of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happened was that um, the uh, district or the di- whoever's the charge, the state attorney general or whoever's uh, over her, uh, they filed a motion that she should be dismissed from the, yeah. prosecuting the case. Anybody mm-hmm. and her her. Uh, thing because she used the case to get campaign money. Hmm. Yeah, she's running for uh, re-election. Okay. So yeah, and she's in she's in a big election right now. So yeah. Hopefully, I mean, and this is one right. Thank you for that. This is one of those situations where I don't think those people were being safe. Their guns. One of them wasn't even operable. The other one probably wasn't loaded. They did some bad things, but at the same time, we don't feel like they should be charged. And if you're going after these guys because of politics, we're not down with that. Obviously, they're probably not even gun people, and they're probably they're probably more liberal than conservative or on the left than on the right, if that matters. But ultimately, it doesn't to us, right? Mm-hmm. We're we're gun people. We believe in the Second Amendment. We believe in the Constitution. And to go after these guys is wrong. And to come back to what we're talking about here, when it comes to NFAC, at the end of the day, most of us support. I'm not going to say everyone. I get that. But most of us support their right to do it because it's our right to do it. It's everyone's right to do it. And if anything, we want to help them. We want them to be safe. They got off lucky here. It's a sign. Heed this sign. Don't keep passing the sign saying the highway is ending and then you drive off the highway. You can be he- right. someone. People could help you here and you could be stronger and you could do something real and you could have everyone's support or most people's support on that. Now. Same grace gave the McCloskeys is the same grace we should give in fact on this, in my opinion. Yeah. And yep. that's exactly it. And that's my point. And I'm not I'm not going to give, I'm going to be critical of the McCloskeys where they messed up. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say, yo, y'all was wrong. First of all, if I got a Scarface house with, like, balconies, <laughs> I'm not... I'm off the second floor, baby. Like, I, we got the high ground. On You'd have high. gun turrets up in there, man. I know. Don't even. Yeah. All day. You know? Mm-hmm. And so to come outside, that speaks to, that's like guys that yell at you in an argument, right? They want to yell at you. Mm-hmm. Not Like, not about sports. They want to, like, get in your face. You're trying to show showcase your dominance as opposed to being dominant, right? And mm-hmm. so they were nervous. They're beginners. We get it, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. We love you. There's no requirement. We don't want you to have a mandatory government-sponsored requirement. We want you to understand the importance and the sign that you got on. You know, the sign that you got, you didn't go to jail, so forth and so on. Nobody got shot. And that's that's exact. Those two mm-hmm. examples are the same. And I'm going to keep that same energy. Mm-hmm. I'm going to approach it the same way. And I'm going to say, okay, nobody, at, in fact, went to jail. If mm-hmm. some, Listen, be clear. If somebody could have went to jail... In, mm-hmm. in, in that town for doing something like like to that extent, somebody would have went to jail. Mm-hmm. That, that would have that would have happened. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think, but but again, for me, if I'm going to be critical of them, just like I'm critical of the McCluskeys, I have to be critical of our rank and file members of or challenge and critical critical. Yeah. Of our- so let me just so let me just get this comment in right. So uh, Appalachian Gunrunner. Uh, says NFAC was looking for a fight at Stone Mountain, Georgia. They were asking for a fight. The McCloskeys were not big difference. What's your response to that, Mosh? Every time you walk outside and point a gun at somebody, you're looking for a fight. So if, so if, you, if you're saying that's true of NFAC, you're saying that the same of the McCluskeys. The McCluskeys' lives were not in imminent danger. They weren't. Mm-hmm. They weren't. They may have believed that they were, and that's yeah. cool. You can believe whatever you want. But I don't want to. Be, I don't. I don't. I don't accept when cops say, "Oh, I feared for my life." Was your life in imminent danger? There's Jason Voorhees with the knife. I'm stabbed. I'm shooting him because he's trying to stab everything. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh no! If you walk outside and you looked for and you looked for an actual, you know, rumble, you mm-hmm. pulled your gun out. Mm-hmm. Pulled your gun out and you at somebody. The 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 in fact some of their rhetoric, right? It's in retaliation. And I mean the rank and file. I don't mean Grandmaster J per se. I saw one of the videos where the, the drivers were being sarcastic towards one of the NFAC members. And he said, well, he said something sarcastic in return. And of course, what becomes the story? The thing that the NFAC member says, not the sarcastic thing that the driver said to him. And I'm not, again, I'm not making any type of um, giving room to unsafe practices. But just like we say we got to wait for all of the facts to come out and context matters, 
I maintain a standard. I maintain, even with things that I do not agree. If, if somebody's saying, oh, white people should da 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 I don't agree with that, but I can still go, no, nah, but they still have the right to arm themselves. That is objectivity. So yeah, to that, to that statement, if the McCl- if NFLAC was looking for a fight, then that means the McCluskeys were looking for a fight. People were walking past the McCluskey's house. They mm-hmm. were walking past. You came outside with your firearms and you brandished them. That's the reality of the situation. I think, I, and, and I would think like looking at that video, there were some people on both sides looking for a fight. So yes. I think the people on the side of the protesters, some of them were also looking for a fight, you know, and, and, and ultimately this is a stalemate. No protesters got hurt. No one on their side got hurt. Those the protesters did keep moving. Um, I think a lot of what the McCluskeys did were dangerous. People should never separate from each other. And if if you're in a fighting situation, don't get far away from each other. Right? There's all these things that we could talk about there. Ultimately, it comes down to a stalemate to me. I don't know if I agree that it's exactly the same thing. It could be similar things because we're talking about feelings, right? We all have feelings as human beings. That has nothing to do with reality. Reality is one thing that's real and finite and definite and then our feelings are a completely different thing based on our emotions mm-hmm. i think that the, the the mccluskeys were afraid and i do think that the protesters came in looking for a fight but the fight wasn't with the mccluskeys the fight was with the mayor that had mm-hmm. just got yep. a bunch of people mm-hmm. you know or and they were literally going to that complex to talk to you know, to post up in front of the mayor's house. Yeah. For, for, for a lot of people, I believe that. I remember Kevin Dixie saying, hey, you know, in a similar situation in St. Louis where there were uh, riots and protesting going on, he went outside, he had his gun in a sling, it was at low ready. You know, that was his, that's a completely different position from the ones that those guys took, but they don't have the benefit of a lot of understanding or training in what they were doing. And if you actually analyze it, why did they have an inoperable gun? Because they were suing the firearms industry, (laughs) you know? So yeah, that we could, we could go around and around on this one. Well, we're, we're so quick nowadays to jump into whatever Mm -hmm. we think is going to benefit our tribe or Mm -hmm. our team. That's Mm -hmm. what it is. I'm going to put on my red hat. And I'm going to go cheer for I'm going to go cheer for the red team. I'm going to go put on my blue hat. and I'm going to go cheer for my blue team. Mm-hmm. And if we even think that there's a tint, you, you wear the glasses, too. So you see red and blue everywhere you go. Mm-hmm. So sometimes if you even think if you see pink or purple, that's enough to trigger you and make you think, oh, I've got to jump on this and I either need to take that person down or I need to blindly support them. Yeah. And I think that that's kind of where we where we get in trouble nowadays. Yeah, I agree with that. That's the most dangerous in the universe. Yep. And that middle path, again, I am not a Sith. I am a Jedi. We're going to walk this middle path, you know what I'm saying, to be able to deal with that gradation. I love, you know, the Infat folks. I love uh, the the McCluskey folks. I love the Mm anti-gunners. I love y'all. Just don't agree because we ain't read the same books and you don't shoot. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we're all Americans in this boat trying to get to the same place and mm-hmm. doing that in the times when it's people that you like, you know, you know Maj, you're not supposed to like them. Says who? We can disagree. I, listen, I say this all the time. President Obama's books, um, The Audacity of Hope and Letters from My Father, are some of the dopest books that I've ever read. Okay. Symbolically, I love, I love what he represented it to people in my demographic of uh, potentially being head at the most powerful seat in the nation, potential, in the world, potentially, right? Okay. Symbolically, I love that. And then I completely disagree with his a, a ton of his policies. Mm-hmm. A way to do both. That mm-hmm. this passion, I'm not trying to attack you as a human and destroy your life. That cancel culture thing will lose our empire status. Well, everyone's going to get canceled out. <laughs> At the end of the day, we're all going to get canceled out. Let me get. Let me just get this in here. Um, it, so, uh, Houdini Unchained said he gave us a couple of bucks here. He says continue to build bridges and not walls, fellas. And then also, Villain Trucker gave us ten bucks. Uh, he says, uh, uh, "quote unquote," the discussion. Um, let me just say this here as we're entering to our final minutes. If you look at what Biden came out with, right, his proposed gun control bills that he's going to put out there. 
I mean, we're talking some completely authoritarian, 100% dismantling of the Second Amendment, period, period, right? That's what we need to think about here. That's outside of politics. Like, I really think that the Second Amendment's outside of politics. If we don't have this as Americans, you know, we're just like any other country in the world. Right. Okay, this right. is the thing to me that separates everything. I, I understand that there's like issues with America. I get all of that, right? I've been through things. Everyone out there has been through things. But ultimately, what makes this place better than anywhere else is you as an individual have responsibility for your own safety and security and for that of your family, your friends, your loved ones, and even strangers out there that, that the universe, God, whatever you believe in, puts you in a position to help people. And when these guys want to take that away, I don't care who it is, man. If it's a, if it's a Republican, if it's Trump, if it's Biden, if it's anyone, okay? If it's my son, I'm going to be against that person. Right, right. I think that explaining that in such a thorough way, like you just did, and saying this is about a principle, this is about an ideal, mm -hmm. this is about a liberty, I can totally destroy their policies or their, their potential policies and then never call them a name. Mm -hmm. I can say these are the reasons why this thought process is worse than freedom. Mm -hmm. Now, would you like some freedom or would you like some enslavement? Mm -hmm. Explaining that is a way that we defend those freedoms and that and I don't have to name call anybody to do that. And I think that if we if we make sure that we're doing practicing that amongst amongst ourselves in the Second Amendment community first, it becomes a it's like the practice that we need to do that with anti-gunners. Mm -hmm. So when we go back to N NFAC, it's, yo, I disagree with that, brother, but I love this about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that you picked up a gun and said, this is important, mm -hmm. went outside, did something with it, love that. Mm -hmm. Because of that, that my brother, even in areas where we disagree. Right, so now you believe in solutions here, man, and we've got like, obviously we've got a couple minutes. I could go a little longer just because I want to get this out. How do you think... Huh? I'm a really hot chick waiting on me, just so everybody knows. Okay, uh, I respect that as a man. I fully respect that. I'm still going to take a couple minutes from you. <laughs> and then you could go in and you could get one for the Gipper, okay? <laughs> but uh, here, here's my thing that I want to know, man. What can we do to, 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 to help in this situation? And I, I, to do something publicly. It doesn't need to be on my platform or anything like that. What can we do to actually help? and have people sit down publicly where everyone can see this, everyone on this side, everyone on that side, and we can somehow talk about this and find ways that we could actually help these guys. Every single one, you could, could present, hey man, here's how I want to help. It's like what I did. I just, I just, he followed me, I DM'd him. I mm -hmm. said, yo man, we should talk. Mm -hmm. We should talk to each other, not at each other, mm -hmm. or about each other, right? That's one. Two, um, even if that 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 uh, olive branch is not accepted, then the next step is okay. I saw this is a problem. So one thing that I saw that I tweeted it earlier, I didn't see one med kit at any of these protests. Okay, is that I true that no no one there had med kits at all? I didn't see any. Okay, now, they may have. I didn't see it. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Just like I was about the McCluskeys, right? Mm -hmm. Or their charges getting dropped. It was layered to that, right? Mm -hmm. I go, hey, I don't remember seeing any med kits. Then I'll start put, telling people, hey, man, I'd like to see more med kits at armed protests. And that doesn't mean, in, in fact, that could mean mm -hmm. I'm going to be, right. you know, at a BLM gun rally in, in Virginia in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start getting with companies and be like, yo, man, y'all want to donate a few, um, maybe 10, you know, first aid kits? Mm -hmm. I'll just start the thing that I recognized that was wrong mm -hmm. or that I saw as wrong I'll just start highlighting the solution I won't even talk about the problem I won't say yeah man those, those white boogaloo boys didn't have any mad kids in January mm -hmm. I won't even say that I'll just go hey man we gotta make sure that we fall and then I'll start highlighting from mm -hmm. training. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. Our friend Rod Mills is chiming in here. He says uh, they had med kits. That's confirmed. But I think okay. you're still making a good point. You know, like maybe what we could do is try to reach across and say, how can we help you guys? You know, this is this is a way that we can help. But everyone has a different way to help ultimately, right? 
So, like, the moral for the story for me in, in all of this is, yeah, we see something crazy. We're allowed to talk about it. That's just how the world works. But ultimately yeah. here, if, we, if, if, if we're really in this community and we want to help people, whether they want to be down with us or not, you have to decide. If you're on the road and you're passing someone, even if you don't necessarily like that person and they're in trouble, are you going to help them or not? Or at least Correct. try, you know, Correct. for your own good. <laughs> if the homeless dude tells me, I don't want no goddamn soup. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna okay. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. gonna just leave the soup here, bro. Mm -hmm. If you change your mind, I'm still moving forward. I'm mm -hmm. not homeless. Yeah. It's cold. You might want the soup later. You don't want to take it from me right now because of your pride. Cool. I'm gonna just leave this soup right here and keep moving. Yeah, forward. yeah. Someone out there is saying if you weren't there, you can't say what was wrong. This is I'm just giving you his statement. He says that there were NFAC medics here. Let me just say, if you're from NFAC, you're listening to all of this. And you 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 have the ears of those guys over there, and they want a platform to come on and talk about. You're welcome to come on my platform. I know Maj has offered that. Um, I'm personally willing to have a conversation with you, right? I mean, a real conversation, which that right. that realness goes both ways. As long as we're res respectful and understanding and listening to each other, then I think we could get uh, uh, things done. One hundred percent. I'm about to get things done. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> Go do it. <laughs> Win one for the Gipper. Win one for the Gipper. I appreciate you, brothers. Uh, I, I, everybody, make sure that you're supporting this channel. Make sure that you're supporting the other brothers here. Hey, bro, we got to get this Alaska thing. Hank, you know, y'all make that happen. Let's make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, and just being safe, being responsible, being solutionary, being all of those good things. Thank you for being that way. Um, but make sure you're supporting these channels that are giving you this type of uh, open dialogue and genuine. Yeah, your audio just yeah, your audio went out there for a second. It might be my fault, though. Yeah. But, but here's the thing. Make sure you guys go sh support Maj and Black Guns Matter as well and all his efforts and endeavors that he's taken on. Uh, go handle your business. Go handle your business. Man. Yeah, we appreciate you. <laughs> Take care, Maj. <laughs> yeah. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.